Welcome to today's episode of the Open Heavens. Again, I welcome you to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, New Covenant Parish, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, the place where God lives. Today, we'll be studying from our book, The Open Heavens, and this book is written by our Father in the Lord, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. Today is Friday, October 22. Friday, October 22. And the title is The Power to Get Wealth. I'll take that again The Power to Get Wealth. If you missed yesterday's studies, I charge you by the message of the Lord and by the grace of God that you should go forth and study that and listen to our message yesterday. Because today's message is going to be like a continuation of where we stopped yesterday. Yesterday's topic was the great physician, which focuses on your health, which focuses on your human health, your physical health, that Jesus is the answer. The same message I bring to you today, Jesus has the power for you to get wealth. But you need to know Jesus for you to get the power to get wealth. To get access to that power to get wealth. You must have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because he is the one that has the power to heal you. And also the power to get wealth. He has the power of healing. And he has the power to give you wealth. So today. There are abundant blessings in the kingdom of God. From our study today, it is therefore means that it is wise decision to seek His kingdom in perfect obedience to the word of God. I remind you that in our study, if you have been following us this week, on uh, on Wednesday, two days ago, we talk about the rewards of obedience. We talk about the rewards of obedience. And yesterday we talked about the great physician. Today now we are discussing the power to get wealth. I would like to remind that today's message is going to be a combination of the obedience path that you need to know, that you need to be obedient to the Lord in totality and also recognize his lordship over your life, that he has the power to heal you and therefore he also has the power for you to get wealth. But what do you need? Obey recognize that he has all authority that has been given unto him all power belongs to jesus so if you're not following the series this week i encourage you to go further maybe from two days ago to study to listen to our message from wednesday at least on the obedience the rewards of obedience and yesterday when we talk about the great physician because it will help you a great deal it will lay the ground floor for you to move with us as we discuss on the power to get wealth. Matthew 6 33 talks about obedience to God. And Deuteronomy 8 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which is sworn unto thy father, as it is this day. This day. I'll say that again. Remember the Lord thy God. The Lord over your life today in this current dispensation is Jesus. You need to recognize Jesus as the Lord over your life. When you remember him, when you recognize him as the Lord over your life, it, for it is he that giveth the power to get wealth. And he may establish his covenant which he swore unto thy father as this this day. I can tell you today that his covenant with you today is to make sure you have all that you need, all that you require, all that you want, the power to get it. He said, if only you will obey him, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, every other thing shall be added unto you. That's the covenant I'm reminding you now today. The covenant of what I'm reminding you today. That is the covenant he has made with you and I that are believers of Jesus Christ today. That if only you seek the kingdom and his righteousness, every other thing, including power to get wealth, including wealth, shall be added unto you. Praise the Lord. Many people think that a life of holiness is one of poverty. Excuse me? Say what? I'm sorry. If you believe that oh i need to look so wretched or so slim that 
that is how I can demonstrate my spirituality, my religious sentiments. That if I'm looking so slim and so you know, rugged, that way people think of me as a spiritual fellow. I'm sorry to bust your bubbles. Brother, you have been misled. Because that is not the gospel. That is not the message of our Lord Jesus Christ. Poverty is not part of him. It, as a matter of fact, he become it poor for you to become rich. Many people think the life of holiness is one of poverty. Huh? Again, don't ever listen to anyone that preach or says anything remotely close to that to you. As a matter of fact, God's desire is for you to be in good health and to live comfortably in riches and in good health, in wealth for your life. This is a lie of the devil and unfortunately he has succeeded in making many people believe that unless they serve him, they cannot be successful in life. Blood money, rituals, all of those things, thinking you can do that to be successful, you're wrong. The answer is Jesus. He already paid the price on the cross. The ultimate price. The blood that needs to be shed. He became the lamb that needs to be shed. So you don't have to be doing some kind of sacrifice of demonic oppression or devilish plots against your life. And you two, you are falling into it. And you are going about these things. And you think that is the only way to, to be successful in life. I'm telling you right now. You've been misled. You need to run back to God. Run back to Jesus. He, is, he has an open hand. And is waiting for you to run back to him. Interestingly. He also tried to deceive the Lord Jesus Christ with this same lie. That's the devil, by the way. Oh, you didn't know that? Let me remind you. Um, in our book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 5 to 7. Okay? The Lord defeated the devil with this same lie. Luke, let's open it real quick. So, you can understand that your life, or whatever it is, the devil has been deceiving you, lying to you about... It didn't start with you. Even when Jesus was in human form, the devil tried to deceive him. Forget not knowing that he's talking to the Lord himself. Luke chapter 4, verse 5. The devil led up, the devil led him up to a high place and showed him an instant of all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. That's a lie. It has not been given to the devil. But the devil was lying to Jesus. The Lord of all right here. Again, that he has this authority that he does not have. That he is willing to give it to Jesus. What Jesus already has. What you already have in Christ Jesus. The devil may come up to you and try to deceive you. Saying he's going to give it to you. Because you do not recognize or realize that you already have it. And the devil is lying to you. Deceiving you. That he will give it to you. Not knowing that. Actually, you have it in Christ Jesus. In that tells Jesus here, verse 7. If you worship me, it will all be yours. This is devil's desire for you to be deceived to worship him. Don't make that mistake. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Hallelujah. Whenever the devil comes to you with this trick, remind him. You worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. Beloved, uh, there are abundant blessings in our Lord Jesus Christ. And a living testimony of this, even I am talking to you right now, even our daddy was saying it in this book right here, but even I am talking to you right now, I can tell you I'm a living testimony of that. For example, that's our daddy in the Lord saying, Before I gave my life to Christ, I used to borrow money from my own driver to fuel my car two weeks into the new month. It was after I gave my life to Christ that I began to know the true meaning of prosperity. The psalmist said that unless the Lord builds the house, the builders only labor in vain. Psalm 21, 27 verse 1 by the way. You will see that I said the Lord building the house, the builders, they labor in vain. Apostle Paul corroborates this in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 6 to 7 by saying this. I have planted Apollo's water, but God gave the increase. 
So then, neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Only God can increase the work of your hands and bless you upon me. One of my children, the Lord trusted in his ability to work hard, so he made a bit of always working over time. However, you know, you work over time thinking that's what you need. No. Not necessarily. However, he still could not make ends meet in spite of being a child of God. His, his, his situation later changed positively when he realized that God has to bless the work of our ends for us to be truly successful. It is only God who blesses without adding sorrow. I smile in saying this to you today because you need to have that rhema, that revelation that as I'm talking to you, it is only God that will bless you without adding any sorrow. Proverbs 10, verse 22. Seeking in genuinely today, and it will give you the power to get wealth with no sorrow in it. What is the requirement? Submit your life to Jesus. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every last shall be added unto you. What is this promise? By his stripes you were healed, it becometh poor for you to be rich. That true is poverty. You are already rich in him. What is the Lord's desire for your life? That you be in good health. And you will believe in abundance and prosperity. Even as your soul prospers. Now, what is the Lord saying to you? Seek him first today. And every other thing shall be added unto you. For it is in the Lord our God that has the power to get wealth. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining me today. I hope to see you tomorrow as we continue our studies, the open end.